Today, a bit of Zigaboo Model East for you. We're going to look at the groove for Sailing Shoes, a Lowell George song that was on Robert Palmer's 1974 debut album called Sneaking Sally Through the Alley. It's a little bit obscure, this one, but I really recommend you check out the record. It, it's fantastic. About half of it was made with some New York session cats as the backing band, including Bernard Purdy, one of our legendary gods and masters. And approximately another half of the record is made with the meters, including Zigaboo Model East, Again, a legend in his own right as well. Uh, the second song on the album, Hey Julia, is one of the very first examples of a song recorded with a drum machine. So it kind of heralds the uh, beginning of the end for us lot anyway. But uh, nonetheless, I recommend you listen to the album. It's, it's really cool. Lowell George is playing slide guitar all over the place and the, the whole vibe of the record is, is fantastic. You can read a bit about how this record and Robert Palmer's next album was made, which was done with the members of Little Feet. Um, in the book Are We Still Rolling by Phil Brown, the legendary studio engineer. Am I using the word legendary too much? But the groove goes something like this. So let's have a look at this thing. The bass drum is playing a fairly straightforward, funky pattern. We've got the bass on one, we've got the uh of two, we've got the three, we've got the and of three, and the uh of four. So if I just play the eighth notes on the hi-hat, we get one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. And it's a good workout for your right foot. Four and a one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. Now, if you listen to the record, what you'll hear also is that there's a hi-hat on those 16th notes where the bass drum is played on the 2R and the 4R. So we get something like this. One, well, not something like this, hopefully exactly like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and so on. Now, I'm suggesting that Zigaboo Modelist most likely played the hi-hat with his left hand when uh, the bass was playing on the uh of two and the uh of four. So we get this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And that gives us an opportunity to work out if there's any flamming and sort of practice getting good coordination between the left hand and right foot. Um, obviously, you, you may have discovered already the opposing limbs don't really like working together. And when you play a groove like this, if you haven't worked on it before, uh, you might find some flamming occurs. So there's inaccuracy um, in the pattern. And uh, just working on a groove like this can really go some way towards working that stuff out and, or just being aware of it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Now, why do I think Zigaboo Model East is playing his left hand on the hi-hat there and not just using his right hand? Well, this goes back to Stanton Moore's explanation of how Modelis came up with uh, Sissy Strut. Sissy Strut's a well-famous groove that Zigaboo Modelis recorded in 1969 with the meters, and the groove goes like this. And Stanton Moore explains how Zigaboo Modelis originally played around with a groove which involved kind of 16th notes, hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, and shuffled, which would have given something like this. And then kind of broke up the 16th note pattern to give us the famous sissy strut kind of funky, lopy feeling hi-hat thing. And uh, I'm guessing that Model East would have done the same sort of thing on this record. If you watch any of his uh, many videos that you can see him playing on YouTube, he's um, kind of comes from this place a lot of the time. So I'm sticking with that interpretation of how this groove should work. And like I say, I think it makes it feel better than playing it with just the right hand. And it kind of, again, gives us this fun opportunity to torture ourselves with the possibility of flamming between the bass drum and the left-handed hi-hat note. If you have uh, flamming issues between the right hand and the bass drum, there's other stuff you need to be working on as well, but that's another subject. Get in touch with me if you uh, want to get into that. So back to sailing shoes, if we play the bass drum pattern I described, 
one, two R, three, three and four R. With the 16th note pattern, we get this. A one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one and two and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one. Now, if we take out everything the left hand does apart from the two R and the four R, then we get this. One and two and a three and four and a one. Now you listen for the flanning. Two and a one and two and a three and four and a one. Two in the chorus, extra bass. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and four and put on your sailing shoes. Sorry, Lord. Okay, so that is the sailing shoes groove and getting the shuffle to feel right when you've only got those 2R and 4R giving you the skip note uh, can be quite challenging for a lot of people. So again, I would maybe explore practicing this. One, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and four, and then uh, record yourself, see if that sounds nice and coherent and shuffly, and then take out the uh, unnecessary left hand strokes, all the various E's and R's apart from the 2R and the 4R, and see if you still get that shuffly feeling. I would try and internalize the shuffle as well, so that when you're playing this, you're kind of uh, singing to yourself maybe. Then you can experiment and add some notes occasionally. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one. And just kind of mess around with the beat and see if you can keep it feeling good. Once you've got the hang of the main groove pattern, I would then work on opening the hi-hat on the one and and or the three and. So, for instance, in the uh, first couple of bars of each chorus, there's an open hi-hat like that, and you get this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Once you're feeling fluent with the groove, make sure you play along to the record. That's always a good thing to do. You should play along to recorded music as much as you can, in my opinion. But the next thing to do is to Play it and improvise a little bit. Try varying the left hand strokes on the hi-hat, bringing in different E's and R's and see what happens. See if you can vary the sticking. Uh, you might want to keep the right hand falling on the snare drum or the left hand possibly. Uh, I think naturally I tend to drop the left hand on the snare, but either is possible. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Either of those uh, works, but gives a slightly different feel, I find. Uh, and see if you can vary the opening of the hi hats and the bass drum patterns too. So uh, let's see. Let's see what happens when I have a go. There you go. And occasionally the electric hi-hat actually behaves um, a bit like a hi-hat sometimes. There endeth today's lesson and hopefully that's introduced some of you to something you haven't tried before. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And of course you can hit the subscribe button to be informed of my future videos. Now I think it's time you go off and practice. <laughs>